Hello, maggots. I mean, audience. My name is Miss Agatha Trenchbull, and I am your headmistress here at Crunchum Hall. I like the rules. That is how the game is played. Applauding is strictly encouraged. All cell phones should be silenced, and flash photography is prohibited. Bathrooms are located in the lobby, and the exits are where they are clearly marked. If you do not abide by my rules, you shall be sent to Chokey! Enjoy the show. My mommy says I'm a miracle. My daddy says I'm a special little guy. I am a princess. I am a prince. Mom says I'm an angel sent down from the sky. My daddy says I'm a special little soldier. No one is as handsome, strong as me. It's true, he indulges my tendency to bond. But I'm his little soldier. Hop, two, four, three. My mommy says I'm a miracle. One look at my face. Chop the umbilical cord It's been clear there's no fear for a miracle like me My daddy says I'm a special little soldier No one is as bold or tough as me Has my daddy told ya One day when I'm older I can be a soldier And punch you in the face One can hardly move for beauty and brilliance these days It seems there are a million of these One in a million of these Days. Specialness is Derricka. Above average is average. Go figure. Is it some modern miracle of calculus? Or do all these freaking miracles render each one unmiraculous? My mommy says I'm a miracle. One look at my face and it's plain to see. Ever since the day the umbilical cord, it's been clear there's no peer for a miracle like me. Mrs. Wormwood, I want you to think very carefully. What do you think might be the cause of this? Am I, uh, look, am I fat? Mrs. Wormwood, you're pregnant. What? You're gonna have a baby. But I've got a baby. I don't want another one. 
Isn't there something you can do? You're nine months pregnant. Antibiotics are... <gasps> oh my good lord. What about the bi-annual International Amateur Salsa and Ball Redemption Championships? A baby, Mrs. Walmart, a child, the most precious gift that the natural world can bestow upon us has been handed to you, a brand new human being, a life, a person, a wonderful new person is about to come into your life to bring love and magic and happiness and wonder. Oh, bloody hell. Every life I bring into this world restores my faith in humankind. Push, Mrs. Walmart, push! I'll push you in a minute! Each newborn life a canvas yet unpainted This still unbroken skin This uncorrupted mind Every life is unbelievably Unbelievably unlikely, unlikely. But chances of existence Almost infinitely Infinitely small The most common thing in life is love My son. Ah, Mr. Wormwood, are you smoking a cigarette? What? Oh, I'm sorry, Doctor. What am I thinking? This calls for a proper smoke. My word, he's an ugly little thing. Oh, what? This is one of the most beautiful children I've ever seen. Oh, my word, where's his thingy? His what? His thingy, his whatchamacallit, his doodah. What have you done with his thingy? This child doesn't have a thingy. What? A boy with no thingy? Look what you've done, you stupid woman. This boy's got no thingy. Mr. Wormwood, this child is a girl. A beautiful little girl. She doesn't have a, a thingy. Is there still time for the biannual inter-sausage champion? Competition's finished. You've missed it. Look, I don't suppose there's any chance we could exchange women for a boy now, could we? This is the worst day of my life. Oh, my undercarriage doesn't feel quite normal. And my skin looks just revolting in this foul fluorescent light. And this gown is nothing like the semi-formal, semi-Spanish gown I should be wearing in the semi-finals tonight. I should be dancing in a tarantella, came on fair. Italiano, not dressed in hospital cotton with an ouchy front bottom and this miracle, horrible, miracle, smelly little horrible animal I have ever seen. I can't find it, Frank can fame. Every real life is unbelievable. My mommy says I'm a miracle. Chances of existence almost infinitely. My daddy says I'm a special little guy. The most common thing in life is love. Kids like me should be a good 
Yes, sir, that's right, sir. 155 brand new luxury cars, sir. Are they good runners? Well, let's put it this way. You wouldn't beat them in a race. <laughs> no, sir. Yes, sir. They are good runners, sir. Indeed, sir. So how much are we talking about? Ah, oh, Harry! Hang on. Look at this. She's reading a book. That's not normal for a five-year-old. I think she might be an idiot. Listen to this. It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Oh, no, 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 no. Stop scaring your mother with that book, boy. I'm a girl. And she keeps trying to tell me stories, Harry. Stories? Who wants stories? I mean, it's not normal for a girl to be all thinking. I'm going to call you straight back. Would you please shut up? I'm trying to pull off the biggest business deal of my life, and I have to listen to this. You know, this is your fault. You spend us into trouble and expect me to get us out again. What am I, a flaming escapologist? Escapologist, he says. What about me then? I've got a whole house to look after. Dinners don't microwave themselves, you know. And if you're an escapologist, then I must be an acrobat to balance that lot. The world's greatest acrobat. I'm off to bleach my roots, and I shan't be talking to you for this big of a way in which you're treating me. But I'm about to make us rich. Rich? How rich? Very rich. Russian businessmen, very, very stupid. Your genius husband is going to sell them 155 knackered old bangers as brand new luxury cars. But that's not fair. The cars will break down. What about the Russians? Fair? Listen to the boy. I'm a girl. Fair doesn't get you anywhere, you thick-headed twit brain. All I can say is thank heavens Michael inherited his old man's brains. Hey, son. Hmm, well, I shall take the money when you earn it, and I shall spend it. But I shan't enjoy you because of the way you're treating me tonight. This is all your fault with your stupid books and your stupid reading. What? But I didn't do anything. That's not right. Right? Right? Let me tell you something. You're off to school in a few days' time, and you won't be getting right there. Oh, no. I know your headmistress, Agatha Trunchbull, and I know all about you and your smarty pants ideas. Great, big, strong, scary woman she is. Used to compete in the Olympics, throwing the hammer. What do you think she's gonna do to a squeaky little goblin like you, boy? I'm a girl. Get off to bed, you little bookworm. Children. Hmm. Oi, 
Isle of Violet's hair tonic for men. Yup. In the slip of a bolt, there's a tiny revolt. The scene of a war and the creak of a floorboard. A storm can begin with a flap of a wing. The tiniest mite packs the mightiest sting every day. Starts with the tick of a clock, all escapes. Starts with the click of a lock. If you're stuck in your story and want to get out, you don't have to cry, you don't have to shout. Cause if you're little, you can do a lot. You must let a little thing like little stop you. If you sit around and let them get on top, you won't change a thing. Just because you find that. In business, son, a man's hair is his greatest asset. Good hair means good brains. And the secret to my success in business is... Yes, boy, secret. And the secret to my success is this. Oil of Violet's hair tonic for men. Stand back, son, your old man's going to work. Oh yeah, that's it right there. That's the bananas. You're watching a master at work here, son. I know business and business knows me. And the one thing I know is that a man in business simply cannot fail to be noticed when he looks like this. Ah! Your, your hair, it, it's green. Good Lord, woman, have you started already? It's not even 8.30 and my hair's green! What on earth did you do that for? What do you want? Green hair. Uh, I don't want green hair. I didn't do anything. Maybe you used some of Mommy's peroxide by mistake. That's exactly what you've done, you stupid man. My hair. My lovely hair. Oh, my good Lord. I've got my deal today. The Russians. What am I going to do? I know. I know what you can do. What? What is it? What can I do? You could pretend that you're an elf. <gasps> That's it. I could pretend I'm a... Wait a minute. What are you on about, you fool? The boy's a loony. Mom, would you like to hear a story? Oh, don't be disgusting, creep. Go on, back to that little library of yours or something. The sooner you're locked up in school, the better. What a pleasure to see you. Oh, back in the library again, are we? Oh, yes. My mom wanted me to stay at home with me. She hates it when I go out. She misses me so much. Dad, too. He loves having me around. But I think it's good for grown-ups to have their own space. Oh, your parents must be so proud to have a girl as clever as you. Oh, and do you tell them stories like you do with me? Oh, I do love your stories. Oh, that's not a hint, but... 
But if you happen to have a story you'd like to tell me, I could. Goodbye, Mrs. Phelps. See you next week. Oh, goodbye, Miss Honey. Good luck with the Tolstoy. Uh, as I was saying, I'm not hinting, but if you did have a story... Who is that lady? That lady? Oh, that was Miss Honey. She's going to be your teacher. That lady? That lady is my teacher? That, yes, your teacher. Now, are you going to tell me a story or... <laughs> Are you going to tell me a story or what? <laughs> Once upon a time. Oh. Once upon a time, the two greatest circus performers in the world, an escapologist who could escape from any lock that was ever invented, and an acrobat who was so skilled it seemed as if she could actually fly, fell in love and got married. They performed some of the most incredible feats together anyone has ever seen. And people would come from miles around. Kings, queens, celebrities, and astronauts. And not just to see their skill, but also to see their love for each other. Which was so deep that it was said that cats would purr as they passed them. And dogs would weep with joy. They moved into a beautiful old house, and in the evenings they would walk and take the air. And each night, the children of the town would wait in anticipation and hoping for a glimpse of the shiny white scarf that the acrobat always wore. But then they knew they only had to cry, tricks, tricks, and the great performers would instantly oblige with the most spectacular show just for them. But although they loved each other, Although they were famous and everyone loved them, they were sad. We have everything that the world has to offer, said the wife. We have everything. We do not have the one thing in the world we want most. But the one thing. We do not have a child. Patience, my love. Patience, my love, the husband replied. Time is on our side. Even time loves us. But time is the one thing no one is master of. And as time passed, they grew quite old. And still, they had no child. Oh. At night, they would listen to the silence of their big, empty house. And they would imagine how beautiful it would be if it was filled with the sounds of a child playing. Oh, Matilda, this is so sad. <laughs> Don't you dare! The sadness overwhelmed them and drew them on to ever more dangerous feats as the work became the only place they could escape the inescapable tragedy of their lives. And so it was. They decided to perform the most dangerous feat ever known to man. It is cold, oh. said the husband, announcing the event to the world's press, who had gathered to listen with bated breath. The burning, the burning woman, woman hurling through, through the, the air, air with, with dynamite, dynamite in her hair, over sharks and spiky objects, objects, caught, caught by, by the man, locked in the cage, cage and it is the, the most dangerous feat ever known to man. man. Destiny, said the wife, smiling sadly and slipping her hand into his. It is where the loneliness of life has led us. Oh. What happened next? I... I don't know. Not yet, anyway. I'll tell uh, you tomorrow. But, but isn't there some more? I mean, just a little bit? Isn't there just a little bit more? Oh, well, I suppose your mother's waiting for you. Oh, is she here? Actually, I would love Goodbye, to meet Miss her. Goodbye, Miss Phelps. I'll see you tomorrow. After your first day of school.
you think you're able to survive this mess by being a prince or a princess? You will soon see there's no escaping tragedy. And even if you put in heaps of effort, you're just wasting energy. Cause your life as you know it is ancient history. I have suffered in this jail, have been trapped inside this cage for ages, this living out. But if I try, I can remember that before my life had ended, before my happy days were over, before the sweat of healing all about. Like you, I was curious. So when it's when I asked a thousand questions, but unless you want to suffer, listen up and I will teach you a thing or two. You listen here, my dear, you'll be punished as a feeling. You step out of the line, and if you cry, when you tell me you should stay out of trouble. And remember to be extremely careful. Why? 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 Didn't you hear what we said? Just you wait for his end. What's his end? Physical education. It's a trunchful speciality. My name is Miss Honey, and today is a very special day, your first day of school. Now, do any of you know any of your two times tables? Wonderful, Matilda, isn't it? Please stand and do as much as you can. One times two is two, two times two is four, three times two is six, four times two is eight, five times two is ten, six times two is twelve, seven times two is fourteen, eight times two is sixteen, 9 times 2 is 18, 10 times 2 is 20, 11 times 2 is 22, 12 times 2 is 24, 13 times well, 2 is... Well, my word, that is very... 13 times 2 is 26, 14 times 2 is 28, 15 times 2 is 30, 16 stop, times Stop, stop. Good heavens, how far can you go? I don't know. Quite a long way, I think. Do you think you could tell me what 2 times 28 is? 56. The, 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 well, yes, that's very... Now, how about this? This is much harder, so don't worry if you don't get it right away, but... 2 times 487. If you took your time, do you think... 974. 12 sevens. 84. No, no way. way! Let's leave the math for now and move on to reading. Can anyone read this? Oh, I can. I, please, please, pick me, miss. Me, 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 me. Very well, Nigel. <laughs> I think we'd better leave it there for now, Nigel. We don't want you to burst a blood vessel on your first day. Lavender. Is the first word tomato? <laughs> uh, no, but 
tomato is a very good word. Yes! <laughs> M Matilda. I can now read words. So, Matilda, you can read words. Oh, yes. Well, I had to learn to read words so that I could read sentences, because it's basically a sentence is just a big bunch of words. And if you can't read sentences, you've got no chance with books. And have you read a whole book yourself, Matilda? Oh, yes, I love books. Last week I read quite a few. A few in a week? My, my, that is good. What books did you read? Nicholas Nickleby, Oliver Twist, Jane Eyre, Tess of the D'Ubervilles, The Lord of the Rings, Kim, The Invisible Man, The Secret Garden, Crime and Punishment, and, and Cats in the Hat. Jenny, just knock on the door, don't be pathetic. Knock on the door, Jenny, there's nothing to fear, you're being pathetic. It's just a door you've seen one before, just knock on the door. Look at you trying to hide, silly, standing outside the principal's office. Like a little girl, it's just pathetic. Look at you hesitating, handshaking. You should be embarrassed. You're not a little girl, it's just pathetic. Knock on the door, Jenny. What are you waiting for? Just knock. She's probably having a meeting or something and won't want to be interrupted if anything. Caution in these situations is sensible. One should avoid confrontation where possible. I'll come back later then. But this little girl, this miracle. Knock on the door, Jenny. Just knock on the door. Don't be pathetic. Well, don't just stand there like a wet tissue. Get on with it. Well, well yes, there is. In, in, in my class, that is. There's a little girl named Matilda Wormwood and... Oh, daughter of Mr. Harry Wormwood, who owns Wormwood Motors. Excellent man. Told me to watch out for the brat, though. Says she's a real wart. Oh, no, then, mistress. I don't think Matilda's that kind of child at all. What is the school motto, Miss Honey? Bambinatum est magitum. Bambinatum est magitum. Children are maggots. In fact, it must have been her who put that stink bomb under my desk this morning. I'll have her for that. Thank you for suggesting it. But, but I didn't. Miss Trunchbull, Matilda Wormwood is a genius. Nonsense! Haven't I just told you the girl is a gangster? But she knows the times tables. So she's learnt a few tricks. But she can read. So can I. I have to tell you, headmistress, that it is in my opinion that this little girl shall be placed in the top form with 11 year olds. What? But, but she is a squib, a shrimp, an unhatched tadpole. We cannot just place her in with the 11 year olds. <gasps> what kind of society would that be? What about the rules? Honey, rules. I believe that Matilda Wormwood is an exception to the rules. An exception? To the rules in my school. Look at these trophies, see how my trophies gleam in the sunlight, see how they shine. What do you think it took to become English hammer throwing champion 1969? Do you think in that moment when my big moment came that I treated the Like hell! As I stepped up to the circle, did I change my plan? Hmm, what? As I chalked up my palms, did I wave my hands? I did not. As I stopped. 
myself did I change my grunt from the grunt I had practiced for many a month. No, no, don't. No, no, don't. Did I stray from the front? No, no, detail of my throw was adjusted or forgotten. Not even when the hammer left my hand and sailed high up, up above the stands. Did I let myself go? No, no. I mean, great big question asking. How dare they talk to me like that? Who the hell do they think they are? Flipping filthy, stupid, nasty Russians! Oh, uh, don't tell me we're not rich. It's the mileage. They took one look at the mileage on the first car and told me these cars are knackered. I told them, I said to them, that the reason for the mileage being so high was a manufacturing mistake. Is that true? Of course it isn't true. So you lied? Of course I lied. And they didn't believe you? Of course they didn't believe me. I've got green hair. And what's this? Another flaming book. What's wrong with the telly? She's got no respect, that one. It's all books and stories. No, honest, it's a lovely book. I'm sure you'd... Lovely? Love Here's what I think of your lovely. No, it's a library book. It's from the library. <laughs> You shove a little brat. Get off to bed, you little stinkworm. Do we have any super glue? Yeah, in the cupboard. And while you're at it, why don't you glue your stupid book to your stupid head? <laughs> <laughs> Because you find that life's not fair it Doesn't mean that you just have to grin and bear it If you always take it on the chin and wear it Nothing will change Even if you're little you can do a lot You mustn't let a little thing like little stop you If you sit around and let them get on top you Might as well be saying you think that it's okay And that's not right
I've got my eye on you, boy. I'm a girl. Just in case, if they start to squeeze out of your ears, you're going to need help. I'm Lavender, and I think it's probably for the best if we're best friends. Hide me! Someone pulled her whole can of treacle on a trunchbull's chair. She sat down, and when she got up, her knickers stayed stuck to the seat. Someone told her I did it, but I never, and now she's after me! Well, that's not fair. That's not fair at all. You're done, kid. You're finished. Once Agatha Trunchbull decides you're guilty, you're squished. Yes. She caught Julius Rotwinkle eating a licorice all sort through his sides. She just picked him up, spun him around, and chucked him out the window. Don't listen to them. That didn't happen. They're trying to scare us. I told her they're saying she's going to put me in choking. <gasps> What's choking? They say it's a cupboard in her office that she throws children into. They say she's lined it with nails and, and spikes and, and bits of broken glass. There's a place you are sent if you haven't been good And it's made of spikes and wood And it isn't wide enough to sit And even if you could, there are nails on the bottom So you wish you stood When the hinges creak and the door is closed You cannot see squat, not the end of your nose And when you scream, you don't know if the sound came out Or if the scream in your head even reached your mouth by the sufferer experiencing bouts of chronic fatigue and falling asleep suddenly, often without knowing or any warning at all. You see, he fell asleep and we stuck him under the coats for safety, didn't we? Didn't we? Yes, yes. absolutely. absolutely. Snarkalepsy. <laughs> He'll probably think he's in bed when he wakes up. <sighs> no time for school yet, Mom. Hello. This is in my bedroom at all. Oh! Hello, Miss Trunchbull. Amanda Scrimp! Y yes, Miss Trunchbull? What have I told you about wearing pigtails? I hate pigtails! But my, my mommy likes them. She says they make me look pretty. Then your mother is a twit!
Stock, sir. Completely brand new cars, sir. Green hair? Well, yeah, it was a uh, National Green Hair Day. A celebration of all the wonderful green things in the world, like uh, lettuce and snot. Uh, tomorrow at one, sir? Absolutely, sir. Bye bye, sir. Dos da. Now that is how you. The... You know what? I'm gonna leave this on. <laughs> Looks like rain. class that is little girl named Matilda. Um, bit busy right now. It will only take a moment. Ugh. Come in if you must. This is Rodolfo. Oh, he's my dad's partner. It's nothing like that. We're rehearsing. Ciao. Ah, uh, parla italiano. Bene, ciao, Rodolfo. Piacere, come stai? What? <laughs> Who is this babe? You know what interruptions do to my energy flow. What do you want, Miss Chutney? It's Miss Honey. Well, as you know, Matilda is in the bottom class and children in the bottom class aren't really expected to read. Well, stop her reading then. Lord knows we've tried. <laughs> I'm in the zone, doll. I can feel it in my hips. Don't waste this. <sighs> Look, Miss Chutney, I'm not a favor of girls getting all clover pants. Girls should think about makeup and hair dye. Looks are more important than books. Now look at you. And look at me. <laughs> you chose books. I chose looks. Babe. I beg your pardon. Babes, I'm on fire here, please. <laughs> she can calculate complicated figures in her head in an instant. Calculate this. <laughs> oh, that's <tough> to go. <laughs> her mind is incredible. With a little help from us, she Mind? Her mind? You don't know anything, do you? <laughs> Somewhere along the way, my dear. You've made an awful error. You all blame yourself now. Come along. You seem to think that people like people were well, uh, clever. It's very quaint. It's very sweet, but wrong. People don't like smarty pants what go round Claiming that they know stuff <laughs> we don't know Now here's a tip What you know matters less Than the volume with which what you doubt now is impressed <laughs> Content has never been less important So Mission to shine and stand up and be 
And so, the great day arrived. It was as if the entire world had gathered to see the burning woman hurling through the air with dynamite in her hair over shocks and spiky objects caught by the man locked in the cage. Everything was arranged by the acrobat's sister, a frightening woman who 
used to be an Olympic class hammer thrower. And she loved nothing better than to scare the children of the town. People whispered that in her dark and brooding heart, she resented his sister for both her success and her love. Suddenly, out came the escapologist, dressed as usual in his tights and spangly costume. But there was no sign of the acrobat, and no glimpse at all of his shiny white scarf. And instead of the musical fanfare, there was silence as he solemnly strode into the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, the burning woman pulling through the air with dynamite in her hair over shocks and spiky objects caught by the man locked in the cage has been cancelled. Oh, Matilda! Absolute silence. A passing aeroplane picked up the audience gas and reported it as an atmospheric phenomenon. Cancel That's all because my wife, wife is pregnant. pregnant! Absolute silence. You could have heard a fly burp. And then suddenly, the audience jumped to its feet and roared in appreciation. The applause went on for nearly an hour and the great feat was instantly forgotten. Forgotten by everyone except, that is, the acrobat's sister. When all had quieted down, she stepped forward and produced a contract. A contract? A contract you have signed to perform this feat and perform this feat you shall. I have paid, paid for the posters, the publicity, the catering, the toilet facilities. If I give the crowd their money back, where's my profit? A contract is a contract is a contract. My hands are tied. The burning woman hanging through the air Shocks and spiky objects, objects caught by the man locked in the cage will be performed in perform this day or the prison you both shall, shall go! No! No! What, what, what happened next? I don't know yet. I'll take it tomorrow. Oh, I don't know if my nerves can wait till tomorrow. Oh! Phelps, are you crying? Maybe I shouldn't tell you anymore. No, no, Matilda, we must find out how it ends. And I'm not crying because it's sad. <laughs> I'm crying because they want that child so very much. It must be wonderful to be so wanted. Yes, wonderful. <laughs> Goodbye, Miss Phelps. to you for a moment, please. I'm afraid I haven't been too successful in getting others to recognize your abilities. So, starting tomorrow, I shall bring the selection of very clever books that will challenge your mind. Let me sit and read them while you teach the others. And if you have any questions at all, well, I shall do my best to answer them. How does that sound? <laughs> Why, Matilda, this is the biggest hug in the world. You're gonna hug all the air out of me. Matilda Wormwood! Matilda Wormwood, where is... Yes, Miss Trunchbull. Aha! So you admit it, do you? Admit what, Miss Trunchbull? This court! This foul carnival is none other than a disgusting criminal, a denizen of the underworld, a member of the Mafia! This morning you sneaked like a serpent into the kitchen and stole a piece of my private chocolate cake from my tea tray. No, I did not. Miss Trunchbull, Matilda's been here all morning. Sticking up for the little spitball, are you? Well, I have you know that this crime took place this morning before school started. Therefore, she is... Guilty! Okay. Look, I stole 
stole the cake. And I was really, definitely, sort of thinking about owning up, maybe. But the thing was, I was having a lot of troubles with my belly. You see, the treacherous cake was so good that I scoffed it down too quickly, and it was beginning to fight back. Oops, see? I'm not guilty, I didn't do anything. You are guilty because you are a fiend. You are a crook, you are a thief, and I shall crush you. I shall pound you. I shall consign you to the seventh circle of hell, child. You shall be, you shall be destroyed. It was the biggest burp I have ever done. The biggest burp I have ever heard. The biggest burp I have ever heard of. It was like the entire world went silent for that burp to exist. As a huge cloud of chocolatey gas wafted from my mouth and drifted across the classroom. Past Eric. Past Nigel. Past Amanda. Past Tommy. Past Alice. Past Lavender. Past Matilda. And finally, my, the huge gas of chocolate wafted full into the face of the treasure ball. Bruce Ball Trotter. Yes, miss? You like my cake? Didn't you, Brucey? Yes, and I'm, and I'm very sorry, but... I was wrong if you enjoyed the cake. That's the main thing. Is it? Yes, Borg Trotter. It is. Well, I did. Thank you. Oh, wonderful. Marvelous. That makes me so happy. It gives me a warm glow in my lower intestine. Oh, cool. Tongue to 
sometimes, even me. <laughs> well, come along, Bog Trotter. What? Where? Well, that was the first part of your punishment. There's more. The second part. And the second part is choking! What? No, Miss Trunchbull, please, you can't. Yes, Miss Trunchbull, please, you can. Do you think I would allow myself to be defeated by these maggots, did you? Who do you think I am? A weakling? An idiot? A fool? You? But he's eaten it all. He's done what you've asked. I did it. I ate the law. I did it. No! Don't take me to Chucky! No! That's not right! I would like to offer an apology for some of the things that have been going on here tonight. They are not nice things, and they are not right things. And I would like to state guarantorically that we don't want any children that might be here tonight watching this to go home and try these things out for themselves. I am, of course, talking about reading books. It is normal for kids to behave in this fashion. It stunts the brain, it wears out the eyes, it makes kids ugly, stinky, fatty, sweaty, betty, boring, gaseous, and crucially, it gives them verrucus of the mind. Can I just ask by show of hands, has anyone here actually ever read a book? Show of hands, show of hands. Ugh. Let's Hands up, hands up, who's read a book here? You, sir. What is your name? Barry. Well, Barry. <laughs> Don't take this the wrong way. But bookworm, bookworm, stupid little bookworm, reading all his books like a stinky little bookworm. You read books like a worm, and worms read books, and you read books, so you're a swarm. There. Now, Barry will learn from this. It won't stop him from reading, no, but he'll never put his hand up in a theater again. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, and Barry, may I present to you the very pinnacle of our achievements as a species, the very reason we bothered evolving out of unicorns in the first place. Somewhere on a show I heard that a picture tells a thousand words. So, Telly, if you bother to take a look, it's the equivalent of, like, lots of books. All I know I learned from Telly, this big beautiful box of facts. If you know a thing already, baby, you can switch the channel over just like that. Endless joy and endless laughter Folks living happily ever after All you need to make you wise Is 23 minutes plus advertisements Why would we waste our energy Turning pages one, two, three When we can sit comfortably on a lovely bump release Watching people singing and talking and doing stuff All I know I learn from telly The bigger the telly the smarter the man You can tell from my big telly Just how clever of a feller I am Take it away, son! Ha! 
not learn that from a stupid book, Barry. All I know I learn from telly What to think and what to buy Now I was pretty smart already But now I'm really, really smart, very, very smart Endless content, endless channels Endless chats on endless panels All you need to fill your muffin Without having to really think or nothing Why would we waste our energy Trying to work out Ulysses When we can sit happily on a lovely bat police Watching slightly famous people Talking to really famous people All I know I learn from telly The bigger the telly, the smarter the man You can tell from my big telly Just how clever of a fella I am Who the dickens is Charles Dickens? Mary Shelley, oh she sounds smelly Charlotte Bronte, do not want a Jane Austen, in composting James Joyce, oh he doesn't sound nice Ian McEwen, oh I feel like spewing William Shakespeare, Schmilliam Shakespeare. Moby Dick, <laughs> easy grandma <laughs> All together now! All I know I learned from telly The bigger the telly The smarter the man You can tell from my big telly What a very clever fellow I am All right it's is it just me? Is it just me? Is it just me? Just or am I amazing? <laughs> Hello, I'm Lavender, Matilda's best friend. There's a bit coming up that's all about me. Well, not exactly all about me, but I play a big part in it. But I'm not going to say what happens because I don't want to spoil it for you. All right. Well, look, what I do is I volunteer to get the trunch full a jug of water and then, no, I will not say any more because I don't want to ruin it. Well, on the way back, I find a new and the new is like this really ugly lizard, so I pick it up, and no, I will not say any more. I'm gonna put the newt in the Trunchbull's jug. It's going to be brilliant.
Matilda, how lovely to see you. Are you enjoying school? Oh yes, bits of it anyway. Miss Phelps, where's the revenge section? What? <laughs> oh, we don't have a revenge section. Why? Is there a child behaving like a bully? Hmm? Well, not a child exactly. Oh. Are you? Okay. Is there something? Do you want to hear the next part of the story? The story? Why didn't you say so? Slowly, very slowly, the acrobat wound her shiny white scarf around her husband's neck. For a lot luck, my love, she said, kissing him with the gentlest of kisses. Smile. Smile. We, we have, have done, done this a thousand, thousand times. times. But then suddenly, she hugged him with the biggest hug in the world, so hard that he felt she was going to hoggle the air out of him. And so, they prepared themselves for the most dangerous feat that had ever been performed. The great Escapologist had to escape from the cage, lean out and catch his wife with one hand, grab a fire extinguisher with the other, and put out the flames on her specially designed dress within 12 seconds before they reached the dynamite and blew his wife's head off! <laughs> Sorry, carry on. The trick started well. The moment the specially designed dress was set to light, the acrobat swung into the air. The crowd held their breath as they watched as she hurled over the sharks and spiky objects. One second, two seconds, they watched as the flames crept up her dress. Three seconds, four seconds, she began to reach out her arms towards the cage. Five seconds, six seconds, Suddenly, the padlocks pinged open and the huge chains fell away. Seven seconds, eight seconds. Then suddenly, the door flung open and the escapade just began to reach out one huge muscled arm to catch his wife and the child. Nine seconds, ten seconds. I can't look! Eleven seconds, and he grabs her hand and, and, and suddenly, the flames are covered in foam before they both can be blown to pieces. Oh, hooray! So it does have a happy ending after all. No. No? No. Maybe it was the, the thought of their child. Maybe it was just nerves, but the escapologist used just a touch too much foam, <gasps> and the hands became slippy, <laughs> and she fell. Oh! <laughs> we, we, was she okay? Did, did she survive? She broke every bone in her body. Oh. Except for the ones at the ends of her little fingers. She did manage to live long enough to have the child, but the effort was too great. Love a little girl, she said. Love a daughter. She is all we ever wanted. Oh! <laughs> Died. Oh! 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 And then, at the 
things got worse. <laughs> what? Worse? How could they get worse? Well, you see, the escapologist was so kind that he never for one second blamed the evil sister for what had happened. And, in fact, he was so kind that he asked the acrobat sister to move in and to help look after his daughter. And so, once she moved in, she started to look after the daughter like he wanted. And, but she was nothing but cruel to the little girl, <gasps> making her wash and clean and cook and iron and beating her if she did a thing wrong. Oh! But what? all in secret so that the escapologist never suspected a thing. And so, the poor little girl grew up with the meanest, cruelest, horriblest aunt you could possibly imagine! Let's call the police! <laughs> Miss Phelps, it's just a story. What? Oh, <laughs> of course. Oh, Matilda, you are so smart. <laughs> Your parents must think they won the lottery when they had a child like you. Oh, yes, they're always saying that. They're always saying, we're so proud of you, Matilda. You're like winning the lottery. <laughs> yeah, I'd better go. Pa. I'm so clever, I'm so clever, I'm so very, 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 very clever. I'm so very flaming clever, what a very clever fella I am. Come here, you! What is that? Oh, stop, 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 There's only one man I do that with. Gather round, everyone. I want the whole family to share in my triumph, and not you, boy. I'm a girl! 155 old bangers on my hands. All polished up, but the mileage on the clock telling the truth that each one was knackered. How could I possibly make the mileage go down? I couldn't very well drive each car backwards, now could I? Backwards. <laughs> when I had the most genius idea in the world, I ran into the workshop grabbed the drill, attached it to the speedometer on the first car, and whacked it in reverse. Backwards. <laughs> yes, boy, backwards, backwards, exactly. See, a drill's motor whirls thousands of rotations per second. So, within a few minutes, I'd reduce the mileage on that old rust bucket to practically nothing. I did it to every single car. All right, that's enough now, darling. That's a good boy. <laughs> About 10 minutes later, the Russians show up. Great big nasty face apes, dark sunglasses, don't know who they thought they were. Russians are nocturnal. I saw it on a program once. That was badges. It was a program about badges. Same thing. And did it work? Now be able to fly me off out all day long. But that's not fair. You've cheated them. They trusted you and you've cheated them. What is the matter with you? What have we done to deserve a child like you? You know what I'm going to do tomorrow? I'm going to go down to that library of yours and I'm going to tell the old bag that you'll never to be let in again. What? No, please don't. And if she does, I'll have a fire and you'll never read another stinking book as long as you live. I'm putting an end to your stories, young man. Now get in there and stay in there, you nasty little creep! Just daughter cried herself asleep alone in her room. She never said a single thing about the evil aunt's bullying as 
she didn't want to cause a fuss. And so she suffered in silence. But this only encouraged her to greater cruelties until one day she exploded. You are a useless, filthy, nasty little creep! And she beat her and threw her into a dank, dark, dusty cellar, locked the door, and went out. That day, the escapologist happened to come home early, and when he heard the sound of his daughter's tears, he smashed the door open. Don't cry. I am here, little girl. Please don't cry. Dry your eyes, wipe away your tears, little girl. Forgive me, I didn't mean to desert you. Don't cry, little girl. Nothing will hurt you, you've nothing to fear. I'm here. Have, Have I been, been so wrapped, wrapped up in my grief for my wife? I have forgotten the one thing that mattered to us most. I love you so much, my daughter. I just don't spend the rest of my life making it up to you. We shall be together forever. Forgive me. Daddy, forgive me. I didn't mean to desert you. I didn't want to upset you, please, Daddy. Don't, don't cry, cry, little I'll be all right. With nothing you by will my hurt side, you. You have nothing, nothing to fear. fear. I'm here. But when the little girl fell asleep, the escapologist's thoughts turned to the acrobat's sister. And an almighty rage grew inside his great heart. This, this demon, demon, this, this villain, this, this monster! She has, she has sullied the, the memory of my wife. wife. She has betrayed the trust of her own sister. sister. She, she has shown cruelty to the precious reality of my marriage. Well, he enjoys her game, is it? Then let us see what this creature thinks she can do when the wrath of a grown man stands before her. of her father because he never came home ever again. Matilda, I've got those books we spoke about, so if you like... What are you doing with those books, woman? They're, they're for Matilda. No, they are not. Not on my watch. There is an age for reading and an age for being a filthy little toad! This is a toad, Archibald Trotter. Yes, Miss Trenchable. Yes, Miss Trenchable. Only Bog Trotter here is now a good toad. Sit. It has become clear to me, honey, that you have no idea what you are doing. You believe in kindness and fluffiness and books and stories. <gasps> that is not teaching. To teach the child, we must first break. The child. Quiet, you maggots! But no one was speaking, Miss Trunchbull. Miss Honey, please understand that when I say, Quiet, you maggots! You are entirely included in that statement. Now where is my jug of water? Stupid girl. Look at you. Flabby. Disgusting. Revolting. Revolting, I say. I think it's time. 
time we toughen you all up with a little bit of fizz aid. Have you ever seen anything worse than that smell of rubbish? 
Discipline, discipline. I wouldn't cockroach. You did this, you vile, repulsive, malicious no. little sinner. No, please, Miss Judgeful, please, Ms. no. Mr. please, don't you pull his ears off. I have discovered, Miss Honey, that after many years of experimentation, that the ears of small boys do not come off. They stretch. In fact, I think I can feel these ones stretching right now. No, please. Miss Judgeful, please. no. Leave him alone, you big dead bully. How dare you? You are not fit to be in the school. You ought to be in prison, in the deepest, dankest, darkest prison. I shall have you wheeled out, strapped to a trolley with a muzzle over your mouth. I shall crush you. I shall pound you. I shall dissect you, madam. I shall strap you to a table and perform experiments on you. All of those disgusting little slugs can suffer the most appalling indignities because of you. Yes, you! Have you ever wondered, well I have, about how when I say, say red, for example, there's no way of knowing if red means the same thing in your head as red means in my head when someone says red. Doubt if we are traveling at almost the speed of light and we're holding a light, that light would still travel away from us at the full speed of light, which seems right in a way. But I'm trying to say, I'm not sure, but I wonder if inside my head, I'm not just a bit different from some of my friends. These answers that come into my mind I'm fitting these stories delivered to me fully written when everyone shouts like they seem to like shouting the noise in my head is incredibly loud and I just wish they'd stop my dad and my mom and the telly and the stories would stop for just once and I'm sorry I'm not quite explaining it right but this noise becomes anger and the anger is light and this burning inside me would usually fade but it isn't today and the keys in the shouting my heart is pounding my eyes are burning and suddenly everything everything is quiet like silence but not really silent just that still sort of quiet like the sound of a page being turned in a book Or a pause in a walk in the woods Quiet Like silence but not really silent Just that nice kind of quiet 
Tip. Tip over. Tip. Tip over. Miserable collections of excuses for children and you, madam, standing there like the squid of all squids are its beating heart. But I am a match for you, and I shall tell you that there is nothing I shall not do, no length to which I shall not go, no punishment I shall not inflict, no ear I shall not stretch back, no finger I shall not do. Oh, he's in your me, get it off of me. Oh, oh my God, oh. cup of tea. <laughs> so, what do you think it is, this thing with my eyes? I cannot pretend I know, Matilda, but I don't think we should be frightened by it. I think it has something to do with that incredible mind of yours. I'm, you certainly are a very special girl, Matilda. You mean there's no room in my head for all my brain, so they have to squish out through my eyes? <laughs> well, no, no, not exactly, but Yes, something like that. I met your parents. Your mother, she's unusual. What about your father? Is he proud to have a daughter as clever as you? Oh yes, he's very proud. He's very, very, very proud. He's always saying, Matilda, we're so proud of you. We're so lucky to have a daughter as... That's not what he says, Miss Honey. That's not what he says at all. He calls me a liar and a creep and a nasty little creep. I see. Here we are, home sweet home. Are you poor? Yes, yes I am, very. <laughs> don't they pay teachers very much? Well, they don't actually. But I am poorer than most because of other reasons. You see, I used to live with my aunt, but one day I was out walking and I came across the shed. I fell completely in love with it. I ran to the farmer and begged him to let me move in. He thought I was mad, but he agreed, and I've lived here ever since. But, Miss Honey, you can't live in a shed. I'm not strong like you, Matilda. You see, my father died when I was very young. Magnus was his name. He was very kind, but when he was gone, my aunt became my legal guardian. She was mean and cruel like you can hardly imagine. And when I first got my job as a teacher, she presented me with a bill for looking after me all those years. She had written down everything every tea bag, every electricity bill, every tin of beans. And she made me sign a contract to, to pay her back every penny. She even produced a document that had said my father had given her his entire house. But did he really do that, Magnus, I mean? Did he really give her his entire house? I, I cannot say, but I find it hard to believe, just like I can't believe he would have killed himself is what she said had happened. You think she did him in, don't you, Miss Honey? I, I don't know. All I know is that years of being bullied by that woman made me pathetic. I was trapped. And that's why you live here. This roof keeps me dry when the rain falls. This door helps to keep the colds at bay. On this floor I can stand on my own. On this chair I can write my lessons On this pillow I can dream my nights away And this table, as you can see, well it's perfect for tea It isn't much, but it is enough for me It isn't much, but it is enough But Miss Honey, she's got 
at your father's house. She's got everything that's yours. On these walls, I hang wonderful pictures. Through this window, I can watch the seasons change. By this lamp, I can read. And I, I am set free. And when it's cold outside, I feel no fear. Even in the fiercest storms, I am warmed by a small stubborn fire. And there is nowhere I would rather be. It isn't much, but it is enough. You see, my mother gave it to him before she died. She was... An acrobat? Well, yes, she was. How did you... And my father, he was... An escapologist. Matilda, how do you know that? So they were your parents. What do I don't... A story. I've been telling a story and I thought I was making it up, but it's real. It's your life. I've seen your life. You've seen my life? She did him in. Let's go to the police. What? No, we can't. We have no evidence. But you could just tell them. Tell them she did it. That wouldn't work, Matilda. It would be my word against hers, and they would never believe that she was capable of murder. But why, Miss Honey? She was so cruel to you. She beat you. She shouted at you. She locked you up in tiny cupboards and threw you in cellars. So, Matilda, please. Your aunt's a murderer, Miss Honey. Who is she? A contract is a contract is a contract! Miss Trenchable. In this world, children, there are two types of human beings, the winners and the losers. And I am a winner. I play by the rules and I win. But if I do not play by the rules and I do not win, then something is wrong. Something is not working. And when something is wrong, you have to put it right even if it screams. What are you looking at? You. This class is going to have a very special spelling test. Any single child to get one answer wrong shall go to Chalky! <gasps> you. No, um, let me see. Spell new. Newt. N-E-W-T. Newt. What? Miss Honey's taught us. She's very good at teaching. But Miss Honey is too pathetic to do any of that. Any moron can see that. You. Stand up, turn around, and spell the one thing that you all are. Revolting! Revolting. 
R-E-V-O-L-T-I-N-G. Revolting. You're cheating! Of course she's not cheating. She's simply spelling the word. <laughs> but, but, but these little specks of dust can't be that clever. They are worms. I've taught them, that's all, with love and patience and respect. How dare you bring those words into my classroom, madam? You know nothing of teaching and I shall prove it. You, Phil Fogg, Snot Nose, spell Angela Gaminia Syllapatrosmosis. What? But there's not even a word you just made that up. Spell Orca to Chokey. And I shall warn you, it has silent letters. in Chokey, too. What? Dog, D-Y-G, and me. Table, X-A-B-Y-D, and- Stop this, stop this! You can't put us all in Chokey, miss. Banana, G-T-A-A-B-L. No, no! Mag maggots, T-S-Y-D-F. Snot nose, U-T-O-O-O-O-O-O-O. No! Where we're voting, 
Acrobats and escapologist's daughter received a letter from a solicitor. It said her parents' will had mysteriously turned up, and she was now the owner of the beautiful old house, which had, up until that moment, belonged to the evil aunt, one Agatha Trunchbull. She moved in immediately. And she was very, very happy. Happier than she had been in her entire life. As for Miss Trunchbull, she was never seen again. The Chokies were immediately destroyed and a new headmistress took over. Her name was Miss Honey. And it was known throughout the land that it was the best school. And you want to know something else? Matilda was never again able to move things with her eyes. I thought perhaps it was because her mind was being challenged, but she said it was simply because she didn't have a need for superpowers anymore. But sometimes I would look at Matilda, this little girl who had done so much to help others, but was stuck with parents who were mean and cruel and called her names, and I could feel my blood boil, because I would just wish I could do something. So, this is the end, and I wish so very much I could tell you that this story has a happy ending. I wish I could tell you that Matilda found the love she deserved. But perhaps the truth is, some stories don't have a happy ending. Don't just stand there gulping, we're going to Spain. Spain? But why? Because this is yet this net. This twit brain seemed to think it was a good idea to sell 155 albaners to the Russian Mafia. I didn't well know there was the flaming Russian Mafia, did I? Come on, boy, we're living forever and we're never coming back. Let Matilda stay here with me. I beg your pardon? Mr. Wormwood, I would love to look after Matilda, if she would like that, that is. I would look after her with love and care and respect and I'd pay for everything. Would, would you like that, Matilda? You mean, you mean leave our daughter? Here, with him. Dad, did you just call me? They'll be here any minute. Dad, you called me your daughter. They're here, you idiot. I told you. Quick, hide in the library. 
What if they damage my legs, my beautiful legs? <laughs> you are the woman's daughter? Yes. Where is your father? He's... I don't know. The woman is a stupid man. And being stupid, he thought that I was stupid too. And that is a very rude and stupid thing to do. Yes, I'm afraid my father is very rude and very, very stupid. You know this? <laughs> At least there's one clever one in the family. <laughs> what do you name, little girl? Matilda. I like you, Matilda. You seem smart. Uh, sadly, in my line of work, I don't often meet smart people like you. The line of thinking is all backwards. Backwards. <laughs> Shuba means Yoski and Prietski and Tiyufami. Tai Gavari Pavaruski? Toshi and Tieska and Prietski Yotski and Tieski Toshki and Tietsudoshi. But Toto, who taught you to speak Russian? Well, I taught myself, I suppose. I was reading Dostoevsky, and I thought it would be best if I was reading it in the language it was written in. <gasps> I am so gay. Matilda, your father has been very rude and stupid to the both of us, yes? I could very easily have my man teach him some manners. And one day, when he leaves hospital, he will still be stupid, but not so rude. At least I think so. What do you say? Well, Mr. Sergei, that is a very tempting offer, but he is my father and I am his daughter. I think I've had enough of revenge. This little girl, this miracle, Matilda. What? No, no, no! What did you get in Nordia? You do what is the star? Matilda! Do you know what's Matilda? How much did you see in Afghan? Matilda, your father is very rude and stupid. But he is very, very, very lucky to have you as his daughter. <laughs> Although, if I happen to be doing business here again and I see him, he will not be so lucky. Quick, let's get out of here before they change their minds. But what about the girl? Do, do you want to stay here with Miss Honey? Yes, I do. And you want to look after her? I do. Well, we are a bit short on room, so, uh, yes? Thank you! And Matilda leapt into Miss Honey's arms. And hugged her. And Miss Honey hugged her back. And they hardly noticed as the wormwoods. And Rodolfo. As the wormwoods and Rodolfo sped off into the distance. Because they had found each other. Yes, they had found each other. <laughs> <laughs>